Yeah, record. Oh, and... Yes! I'm so glad you're here. And <laughs> you don't even know what to do. That's awesome. Okay. All right, here we are. We've got, can we see us though? We're kind of like not really able to see. We need to have to, there we go. We'll have to just hold our drums up. Okay, you want to have this, what drum are you going to have? I will shake the rack. You're going to shake. Okay, well, let's try to just keep ourselves in the screen if we can. Okay, so we'll, well, we're just going to sing a song that we almost all, well, we like this song. I like it. Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come down where we are to be. When we find ourselves in the place just right, we'll be in the valley of love and delight. When to simplicity is Nikki Craig, we'll hold hands. We like to hold hands. Okay. So in heaven, we are grateful to be able to be here um, as sisters to learn this important thing that we might be able to serve thy children. We are grateful for the technology that can find us together through the miles and Pray that it will continue to work properly for us. We are grateful to be learning these things and know that it will be of great importance in the future and pray that we might learn much today and be able to feel thy spirit guiding us. We're so thankful for <clears throat> thy help in all the areas that we need in our lives and we continue to pray for light and goodness to go throughout the world and to help us all. We love thee and thank thee and ask for these blessings in the name of thy son Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well I just want to start out with uh, talking about what happened this morning and how it compares to birth. <laughs> um, we had so many little glitches on the track of this class, but one of them was that the power went out this morning. So up until recently, we didn't have power, which meant a lot of things wouldn't work properly. And then we couldn't get the internet on my computer to work. Thankfully, um, Faye had her iPad, which we're using. And, um, but right in a couple of moments, I was getting stressed and, and Faye was like putting her hand on my, <laughs> what were you doing? Okay, we have to be able to have them see us because I think this is really significant. Um, you know, when you're, when you're not feeling, like when you're in labor, um, you're going to, you're going to encounter, or when you're helping someone in labor, you're gonna encounter, um, women who are getting maybe on the verge of even panicking you know like I think I was I was getting agitated and it had built and built and built right the smoke alarm was chirping my husband <laughs> I was like Kevin get this <laughs> you know but anyway so show me what you did okay let's let's just can you make sure that you can see proper now okay so you're going to demonstrate so I'm just kind of just look at me like this and you show me what you're doing. Charlene was getting uh, agitated and um, inside I'm praying for her and, and I'm touching her with my cool, calm hands. And I really slowly, very slow, like it's a pacing breathing. thing, right? And then she's modeling for me. She's, she's looking in my eyes and she's modeling calm. And she's just like putting her hands on my legs. And right away, my whole body went into, I was able to take a breath. I was able to go, okay, she's, she's calm. So I can, it's, it's a contagious thing, right? 
like I can actually draw in her calm. So thank you for that. And I want you to look your eyes right in there really close and, and just say it to them as you would say <laughs> it. Where's the camera? <laughs> yeah, and just say it to them as you would say it to a mother if she was going through something like that. A lot of times when, when moms are getting amped, you don't actually say words to them, but sometimes you do, you need to just bring them and center them in. And a lot of times you can do that just with a touch and with breathing and maybe a look at me everything's okay. And you don't have to amplify your voice to try to speak over what's going on or the noise that they're making. A lot of times we just bring it down and, and talk more softly so that you do um, possess the room with your softness and your calm. Yes. yes. And, and one thing that has been really coming up for me in my own experience with my own, um, you know, complex PTSD that I've been healing from, um, which is kind of what can happen in birth where it can trigger people's uh, other traumas, right? Um, and that is the pacing being really significant. And that is slowing the energy down. So how you have to slow energy down is, first of all, you have to recognize where it's at. Sometimes you can go in, like she said, and you can go in and you can just go in softly right underneath it and bring it down. Sometimes you have to meet it where it is and just bring it down from where it was because there's too big of a gap. So you take it, you might go as fast as her, but then you're going to slow it down and she's going to mirror you. She's going to be able to mirror you. So do you want to do an example? Can you pretend you're agitated? Me? Yeah, and you're, you're in labor, okay, and you're agitated. And then Nikki's going to come along and help you. Um, okay, let's give a scenario. Um, you are, your husband's not in the house. Um, you are having your baby. There's um, the hospital's too full. So you just, your plans have changed suddenly. You were supposed to have a hospital birth. Now you're, and your husband's not home and you're having a precipitous birth. This is your neighbor, but she has experience and training. So she's going to help you. Okay. So you're upset about that right now. I, I feel like I'm having my baby. Nobody's here. Help me. I don't know what to do. I, I, I've, I've done this before. I've got you. Okay. Okay. We're going to do this I together. I don't know if I can do this. Like, I just don't know if I can do this. Okay. Okay. Are you sure? I just don't know if I can do this. Okay. I don't know. Can I do this? You've got this. We've got this together. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Are you sure? I just, I just don't know if I can do this. Okay. Maybe. I think you I maybe can. Can. I'm going to help you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So see how she's got her from, she didn't, like, she, she kept kind of expressing herself, which she maybe she needed to do, but she just kept mirroring the calm. And see how nice that turned out. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go through some, a few basic principles that we teach in our classes. Um, before we do, does anybody have any pertinent comments or questions that you want to make? We want to just get right into it here. <clears throat> okay. So I thought we would do. Um... Oh, Charlene, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is probably going to sound very naive, but is there ever a, a, an appropriate time to raise your voice? Yes. Um, it would be if like there's a bunch of people and they're being disruptive in the birth, like that could be at any given time during the birth. You, you would try to use your, your words without too much uh, vocalization. But if you had, if people are making noise and you have to gather that crowd and get them out of there, yes, you take a command voice. You're, you're a general in an army at that moment. And yes, it doesn't matter. She's, she's in her own little bubble. If you're not talking to her and you're taking care of her and she can kind of sense that is happening, it's going to be okay. 
you know so some of the circumstances for that and the reasoning for that i want to get into which is the hormonal cocktail now um the hormonal cocktail is probably one of the most important things um that you can understand i guess about how to create the right atmosphere in birth okay i feel like this isn't the best angle here but sorry guys this is i i there it is. <laughs> let's try that okay so um <clears throat> so you've got the labor which is starting when she's in active labor so active labor is the contractions are coming lasting for a full minute and they are um, four minutes apart for one to two full hours that's active labor before active labor she should be kind of just you know going through her normal life right um, getting ready but not overexerting herself eating resting doing all those things light exercise but then when she's in active labor that's when if it's your job to help her that's when she needs help okay and in order for her to have the proper physiological responses that her body needs to have like for her contractions to be rhythmic for them to do what they need to do which is dilating the cervix to 10 centimeters you don't need to know if it's 10 centimeters there's no research to support that knowing that helps anything it's best just to trust and let her body do what it needs to do without actively having her push just letting her push when she can't help but push never suggesting or trying to coach pushing just letting the body do it on its own but the important thing about that hormonal cocktail is to keep it high it is literally we don't even know how many hormones are involved in that literally a cascade of a cocktail of amazing amazing biochemical engineering by the deity the divine design of god i feel my whole body is just vibrating right now as i'm saying that so what we want to do is keep that high and women are highly suggestible they're very very sensitive if you think of like a kitty or a little puppy trying to birth and if there's noise around that puppy or if somebody's coming around and rubbing that puppy's you know babies or or I don't know just getting involved when they shouldn't or making noise that's going to disrupt the natural physiological process of that birth right mm -hmm. it is a full-on perfect design when it's uninterrupted and what is an interruption an interruption is anything that disturbs the flow of the hormones from the beginning of labor it's going to build like this by the time she's in active labor it's going to be up here we want to keep it up here. We don't want any interruptions to that hormonal cocktail. She's going to have her baby. And then we want to keep it up here after too, because that's going to prevent bleeding. It's going to encourage proper bonding, proper imprinting of the baby and the mother will reduce postpartum depression. Everything is better if that cocktail is kept high. So Faye, I want you to come forward and teach us just a couple of things that you think help keep the cocktail high in labor and postpartum. Can I ask, can I ask sure. one quick question before you go sure, to Deb. that part? Hi, Deb. Hi, it's been a long time well, since I've had a child <laughs> and they were mostly C-sections. <laughs> so what position when, when you're at that point where the, where the hormonal cocktail is starting to elevate, what position should you have the woman in? at that time should she be sitting squatting okay, that's a good question down. i will have um they leaned address that question so perfect thank you okay, okay it kind of goes along with um, Hi, Anne. Uh, keeping the interruptions out um in the situations that we're talking about um you won't be directing the mom at all you'll be encouraging her to direct herself what feels best um, so, and you'll kind of, you'll observe her a lot to see that she's comfortable with the people who are there. Hopefully it is just her husband and yourself and anyone else would probably be out of the room. 
especially moms or mother-in-laws, they can be hard. It can be hard for them to be in there and to see the mom uh, going through the pain if it's their own daughter and things like that. I wouldn't say that you would force any of them out unless you were observing that the mother was uncomfortable with them there. Um, interruptions could be their children. Interruptions would definitely be anyone who's really trying to control the situation beyond what the mom would want. Um, some mothers may need a lot of direction because they want to put um, themselves into your hands. So it would be, for those moms, you do need to take more charge and be letting them know that you got this and helping them to know what to do. But for the most part, you really want to observe moms and encourage them to listen to themselves and find out what position is going to be best. Because mm -hmm. this isn't about you and what you can see. This is about what's going to get that baby out best. Mm -hmm. And especially there at the end, they, they may be moving around a lot or they may settle into a position. If they've settled into a position and you see that they're, they don't seem to be progressing, then you may want to encourage them to change positions. Mm -hmm. We will be going into some positions later on, I'm sure. We'll demonstrate. Yeah. yeah. So just preserving that bubble for her. And some of the ways you can do that is if you are in a position where you don't have a private room, you can actually have people hold up blankets or stand as barriers facing out to make the privacy. And can I just add one thing? That is that um, if you have only one person, sometimes you might need another person to help you. So you might be soliciting help. You might send that person, say if there's someone there that you kind of think would be better out of the room and you need towels, you need water, you need um, a receptacle for her to vomit in or pee in or void in, you know, those are important um, things to have at a birth, like a receptacle, some kind of clean underpads, and um, and you might also ask someone to go call 911 as well. If you have that capacity and you're not a trained, a fully trained person, I mean, if you're just like trained in unexpected childbirth and there's no other options, of course, you're gonna just do what you can. But if you can call 911 and get help, then you will of course do that also. Mm -hmm. Can I add one thing? Sure, yes, and can please. you go close um, up so they can see you? Yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, one thing too is um, that a lot of women do not understand, um, unless they have gone to a midwife or something, but they don't understand that their body knows exactly what to do. You know, that that's just an innate thing. I didn't know that, at least <laughs> when I was um, birthing my children. I just thought I had to do what every what the doctor you know said, and and I didn't know that I had intuitive things that I should follow, you know? So I think just helping them understand that, you know what, your body knows exactly what to do and you just need to be able to come into calm and trust your feelings and trust that intuition. I'd like to do, I'd like to interject there with just another um, role play. Could we reverse it where you're distressed yep. and you're helping her? Okay, um, and maybe we'll try some alternative ways to help her than what she did for you, just if you can, or whatever feels natural for you. <laughs> just go with your flow, okay? Um, okay, so the scenario is um, you're, in a, you're in a store and your water just broke and your children are with the storekeeper right now and you guys are in the back room and you've already called 911. Okay. 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 So, are you guys doing all right? Can I help you? Is this not how it's supposed to be? Yeah, I know. It's okay. Guess what? Your body knows exactly what to do. It's okay. It's okay. Things are going to happen as they should. So, just feel what you need to do and go. It's okay. It's okay. Just breathe with me. Just breathe with me. Would you like to lay down? Oh. Feel comfortable? Okay, yeah, it's fine. Oh, my God. Yeah, what's that? It's okay. 
Okay, so you're gonna get some help here. And um, you and you and you go get this and this and this. <laughs> and then you come here and help me. Okay, let's surround her and face outward. And we're just gonna give her some space here. Okay, all right. Thank One you. hint. Okay, Lovely. <laughs> you know, I think letting them know that their body knows what to do is a really good idea. Because I remember with my first birth, which I had naturally, it, it Deb, was... I'm going to stop you, sweetheart, because yeah. I can't have you telling that story right now. I'd love to hear No, it. I wasn't going to tell the story. I was okay. just going to say it was very traumatic for me. Because I didn't know what was going on. Well, and I pray so, right now that you'll be, that this class will help release some of that trauma for you because that's yeah. what it does. I can feel it right now. And it'll help you to, to, to have, because it is, it's traumatic. Birth is, is a, a potential for high transcendence, just like life, but also yeah. trauma can be in there, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what can I, I say like, something, please? Can I just yes. say something quickly? I, I really Absolutely. loved um, when she said it's not it's it's not what how it was supposed to be and you just kept going with it you didn't get into well you know we'll talk you know it's how it is just just keep her focused it on is what, what it is yeah. right I really my appreciated favorite that mugs is 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 it is what it is um, and at birth um, I think whatever we focus on is going to grow it's just like life whatever we put our energy and our attention on it's it's a principle it will expand. So we want to help her keep her focus on her baby's coming. She can do it. She's got the help she needs. It's okay to be a little bit discombobulated at times. This will pass. This is temporary right now. And we're moving on. And so you just you keep her moving in her, with her birth. And, and I think keep her, I think moving around, keeping her drinking fluids, keeping her urinating. Um, those are some really important things. So movement and then the flow of fluids going in and out of the body. It really helps the body to process a lot of the biochemicals of birth in the liver and in the kidneys. And it helps the mother to just reduces pain. When you're hydrated, you don't have as much pain. So you want to keep a woman hydrated. I think having electrolytes is really good. I'd really like to go through a full birth scenario, even though I really want to teach you more about the hormonal cocktail. But let me just give you two. What did you didn't finish? Did you? You mean, did I have a baby or did I finish? <laughs> <laughs> did you finish what you wanted to say? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to say, though, is this, that um, when we disrupt or interrupt either the labor, the delivery, or the postpartum, they're all the same. You know, you'll notice that deliveries in the hospital or you know, on movies and stuff, as soon as the baby's born, everybody's partying, right? That is a no-no. That is an interruption, okay? Anything to do with loud noises or phoning people or, or just bringing new people in the room that are not, she's not used to, uh-uh. You wouldn't do it with a kitty. You wouldn't do it with a puppy. Don't do it with a mummy. And um, so, yes, we'd be tender. And, and the, the, the kinds of things that create that hormone cocktail are the same kinds of the actual things that create a safe feeling, a feeling of peace, a feeling of calm, a really a feeling of being nurtured and safe. So um, dim lights, calm words, slow pacing, Running water can be nice if you have it, um, and um, and if and a contagious 
sense of peace. So you, you know that comes from your heart space. You can't fake it. You can't fake it and put it on your face that you're smiling and acting like you're okay. But in your heart and in your body, you're tense and fearful. It doesn't go. Those two frequencies don't match. And, and your frequency is going to be matched by her and by everyone else in the room. So what you want to do is you create that energy of peace and calm and trust. You can't change the outcome. You know, you can do your very best. That's all you can do. And you have to get detached from fear and from the outcome. You have to go, I have angelic ministers around me. I have my own higher self here to help me too. And the Holy Ghost, whatever you believe in. I think it's good to believe in deity personally, because at a birth, they're always there. The angels are there like whispering in my ear, you know, it's great. I mean, and they help you move your hands. You don't know what to do. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know, even know what I did, but I just did it and it worked. And it was an angel. And I mean, you, you know, you want to go in there with as much reason and intellect and intuition combined together. But then the other element is the de deity where you have that faith. So you let go. You don't have an attachment to the agenda, to the timing, to the outcome. Uh, even if there was anything that happened. Okay. Now I want to go into some um some complications but before that i just want to do one really really normal birth and but let me just say that in the postpartum period what do you think are some of the things that are going to be helped the most from keeping the hot hormonal cocktail up what will be the most significant result of that does anybody have any thoughts well it is that the mother will her uterus will do what it's supposed to do because those cocktails cause the uterus to clamp down. They, they minimize bleeding. They maximize good child mother bonding, which is essential for the baby to imprint, to build their intact capacity to love. That baby is hypersensitive also. So keeping that bond skin to skin, mom and baby, and making sure the baby's dry after the birth too is really important because the baby's can lose their heat. So let's go through a scenario. Um, if you guys want to grab a baby and um, I'm get baby right right there. There. I don't know if you want to use, I, we just made new placentas. This one has a very long cord. <laughs> and so we use that one. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we'll have you be the mama again. Do you want it? And you be the you be the midwife. Okay. Remember, I'm still learning. And so. and Nikki's still learning, so <laughs> so feel free to correct me <laughs> and suggest things. Mm. Yes. Oh, I will. Okay. All right. So, what's the scenario? How about you tell us what scenarios? I'm pregnant. This is going to be a very normal, no variation type of delivery. Okay. Trying to get this so it goes by itself without me. Oopsie. I'm in my room. Been laboring for a while. Nikki's here. My husband's here. He's supporting my back. We'll pretend like he's here. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think that was a push. It's, it's fine if you just go with what feels like you need to okay. Is it okay for me to push now? The doctor always told me that to push. Okay. You know what? You need to feel your body. Do what your body wants to do. There's blankets right behind her. Oh.
So her legs are kind of shaky. Okay, let's get a blanket for you. There's blanket right there. All right. Okay. So you want to check her, her bleeding. And if there's a gush, then we know that's a placenta, right? Okay, I just want to sort of pause this action for a second here. <laughs> just because I want to talk about this, okay? Um, so they're at this point now where the baby, the baby's on her chest. She's in an upright position and the placenta is still inside, okay? Now she may stay there for a few minutes it may be difficult to really assess the bleeding of the mother in this position. Um, and so I'm going to suggest that you help the mother get into a lying down position in order to really assess anything. That's really better. And, and it's also best for laid back breastfeeding. In a low resource setting, you must do laid back breastfeeding, not sitting up breastfeeding. That's the old fashioned way to breastfeed, which was more for bottle feeding. And it has very poor latch outcomes. So in order to have 100% breastfeeding rates, we must fully adopt a laid back breastfeeding style, which we'll demonstrate right now. Okay. So blink it's off just for the demonstration. Okay. And um, why don't we go ahead and deliver the placenta? Okay. Okay, so just help me up. Okay. Uh, push okay. and out it comes. Okay. Lay down with my baby now. Put this in the bag. Okay. Now. You're just going to put that down beside the baby, wrap it in a little bag or whatever. In the bag. Mm -hmm. good. Okay. And then now you're going to check her, her um, fundus. Okay. So. Well, oh, your sorry. <laughs> sorry, her tummy. Okay. So just so, above between the pubic bone and the belly button. Here's my pubic bone. So right in here. You should feel the, the uterus down in there. Is there any way, would you be willing to expose your belly? No problem. Okay. Just think for <laughs> landmarking. <laughs> How many babies have you had, Faye? I have had eight. She's had eight babies. Okay. And they're amazing. So right Good. here. Okay. Feel it. So. You will actually feel it because my uterus <laughs> is a lot smaller right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So you can feel that if and it, there's see what happened there. Sometimes is kind of mushy feeling. Yes. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Let's go. Okay. 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 Sorry. Luckily nobody got dizzy. Okay. <laughs> so now when she's nursing. That is going to help contract that, mm -hmm. right? Or just even not nursing, even, or even not just nursing. Tidy, like, Let's let her demonstrate the laid back breastfeeding here and see. So, is baby's going to come up? Baby's patting around, mouthing, and you're just going to kind of let that baby. Maybe you'll direct the nipple a little, but baby's just going to get it. And all the padding, mm -hmm. and all the, padding. all the, all the licking and sucking you know we think we want that baby on there like sucking on the nipple instantly and you know nurses will, will get in there and start pushing it in there and doing all this intervention that just that's a disruption okay mm -hmm. remember we talked about disruptions well any disruption to the breastfeeding whether it's the mother or the baby is a disruption to the hormonal cocktail not only for the babe for the mother but for the imprinting I mentioned that sensitive sensitive imprinting with the baby's intact capacity to love and trust which um, means that there's no birth trauma so they don't have that ongoing PTSD which causes multiple problems and we're keeping the cord intact here that's why we didn't cut it we're keeping everything intact so they've proven that
I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Um, did something happen with your It's the way I'm holding it. I think I'm covering the, the oh, mic. Oh, nice. uh, so, okay. How about there? Is that better? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry about that. So all the licking, sucking, and head bobbing are all doing the same uh, or, or similar to what it would be if the baby was sucking. So just keep that in mind. It keeps the hormones up. And then another thing about this baby that we need to um, talk about just briefly is if the baby's um, cord was around the neck. So I'm just going to let them just go backwards and demonstrate that. Okay. I just want to make sure we get that. And I need to not touch that. If I touch the sound again, I'll try not to so touch the side. Both on both so sides. Okay. Top and bottom. Okay, top and bottom. Okay, we're going to go through. Can we start right at the beginning? And we're going to do a cord wrap. And then I'm also going to add another complication in because why not? <laughs> Most births are normal, but you need to know how to deal with complications. So we're going to go with, um, let's see. We're going to go with sh sticky shoulders. And I'm just going to review sticky shoulders so while they're cord and sticky cord shoulders. and sticky shoulders. Okay. So I'm, I'm actually going to review this chart real quick before we go into this scenario. Um, can you guys just read real quick? We'll read a little bit of this just to give you a little bit of an idea before we jump in. Okay. So sticky shoulders or shoulder dystocia allow birth of head to happen on its own. Wait for the body, which will normally come within one or two tr contractions after the head. Mother, have the mother push with contractions. If there is a turtling sign or body is not born, you must change. Do you want to explain what turtling means? Yes, the turtling is when the baby's head is coming out, but it's not coming right down to here where you can see the chin. It's kind of like, looks like it's like it got a turtleneck on. Okay. Um, so you must change the mother's position to encourage a change inside. So like if she's on her, you know, back or um, standing or whatever she's doing, you're gonna want to change her position um, so that you can have a different angle. Um, pelvis molds to baby's body with movement. So as she moves, it's going to mold to the baby's body. Um, help the mother move to hands and knees. Supported standing squat. So either of those. Okay, so and either hands or knees. You can rotate or, through them as mm -hmm. you feel. Inclined. I think that this time, uh, even though a lot of times you can get the baby out with one position change, um, we're going to go through a number of position changes to show you that you know you you allow one push and then you change again, um, so that you can um, be sure to help that baby get out. Because by the time you've realized that they are stuck, you're running out of time. You want you want to help them out. And you only have the mother push with the contraction. Sometimes you have to use nipple stimulation. The father can help with that. If the contractions are really slow, which a lot of times at the end pushing they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can also try um, McRoberts, and that's where the mother is lying on her back, um, and you're helping her hold her knees up toward her shoulders and fully opening the pelvis. Um, Supra pubic pressure to release anterior shoulder. Push firmly in the direction toward the baby's chest. We'll demonstrate that with the doll. Why don't we just do that right now? Um, Nikki or um, Faye. That? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Faye, I'm just going to get all of this. Did you yep. Do that? Oh, oh, it's right here. Okay, sure. Right there. All right, so that's the doll. Right there. Right there. Here. All right. Okay. So can you see me? You make sure, you'll have to look at that so you know what you're filming because you gotta be able to see. Okay. Think real close up if you can. I suppose you want your baby. Okay. So um, if well, let's just say for example, this is the baby's inside, mm -hmm. and so, um, here's the pelvis. 
and the baby's coming down and this looks like this cord's got to wrap mm -hmm. uh, but sure. also this mama um ate a lot of sugar she ate a lot of sugar she ate a lot of fruit smoothies and she thought she was doing real good but she had a high glycemic diet and the baby's shoulder width is wide that will do it i promise you it's better to eat vegetables protein and low glycemic foods in pregnancy anyway so reduces the risk of shoulder dystocia. So, but this baby's got wide shoulders. It's nine and a half, 10 pounds. And um, the babies, it doesn't mean they have to ever get stuck though. They really don't okay. have to. Little babies can get stuck. Big babies can It doesn't come really out matter. Fine. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. the absolute truth. So here we are now for suprapubic pressure. We want to push towards the baby's chest. You see, here's the baby's chest. So I know the baby's this way because I can see the head down here. So I'm going to take my hands, I'm going to take both of them, and I'm going to push this way like this on top, like that. Of course, this is on top of the mom, so you can't see it, but you can feel the pubic bone. And so then you can go ahead. And just to give you a little example of, of something that's a principle of birth, is one thing is the baby's head should always be flexed when it's coming out. So we want to do everything we can to have the chin this way. The other thing that's really important is when the shoulders are like straight like this, there's a wider circumference, but when the shoulders are concave like this, so instead of like this, they're like this. Whenever the shoulders are like this, it's easier for the baby to get out. So whenever we can encourage the shoulders, then that's kind of what we're doing is we're pushing this chest together like that. Okay. Now you guys are gonna go ahead and do a scenario with a, a wrapped cord and a shoulder dystocia. Is there anything else that we want to say about the shoulder dystocia? Where were we on here? Um, running start. Okay, we're going to go through these things. Um, we're going to go through these things because I think it'll be easier for you to remember if you're actually watching. Okay, perfect. Okay. Do you want to do, do you want to have her be the mom this time? Switch? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baleen has had a lot of experience, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not only at her own births, but a lot of other people's births too. <laughs> okay, so what position should I be? Um, we're going to start you out in a position that uh, babies are more likely to get stuck in. How about you lay down? It could be that's the only position you've ever known, and that's yeah, the one you are used to, happen. right? Okay. Oh, out. I'm not actually yelling, but, okay, but yeah. there, I see that there's some turtling now because as she pushes, the baby's head comes out, but then it kind of sucks back in just a little bit, and and she's pushing, but oh, oh nothing's happening. Nothing's and so, come on, Nikki, I'm gonna help you up. I want you to squat here in front of me, okay? okay. Dad, can you help her? Okay. Yeah. Put your arms around me now. Okay. Dad is open. Okay. And push. Okay. And come on. Slow down. Okay. And oh, since it's at first, that's not a good thing. Okay. Okay. Push. Oh. Okay. Now I want you to lunge. Can you put this leg forward like this? Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, let's try hands and knees. Can you okay. hands and knees? Dad, can you come up here? Thank you. When, when you're ready, push. It's not coming. Okay, let's let's try the the Mick Roberts. Okay. The super pubic pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can do the Mick Roberts for like this. Okay. Oh. Cords around the neck. I'm not saying that to mom, but I'm somersaulting baby out. And baby oh, is a little bit purple. But body looks okay. Here's your baby. Oh. Let's see if I can Bleeding. Bleeding is more likely when they've been. Traumatized. He's good. Baby's just a little bruised. So the baby's doing great. Oh. Pinkening up very nicely. 
Okay. Oh, you're doing great. I noticed that there's a gush of blood. Okay. I'm not going to worry about the bleeding, but do you feel like pushing? Ah, uh, uh, yes. And I'm not really pulling on the cord. Uh, okay. okay. We got that. It's in a bowl. <sighs> Setting it to the side. Okay, so we're looking back at mom. Here. I'm gently feeling her tummy. I'm just going to feel your tummy, okay? Everything feels good and tight. Baby's looking good. Touch it. I'm going to put the mummy straight mm -hmm. up and down on her skin to skin straight with a blanket on top. Mm -hmm. okay. And we've got the blankets here. And we're going to check her bleeding. There's no bleeding. She's Bleeding's already good. checked her fundus. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. Okay. Do you need a drink? I'm very thirsty. You might even be yes. hungry too. Mm, thank you. Oh. You did amazing. I have a question. Okay. Does the uterus really clamp down and go hard that fast? Yep. Okay. With except okay. with some moms who have either had a lot of babies, like some moms who've had many babies, it can get <laughs> tired. Yes, okay. you? It can yeah. also be stressed. <laughs> and also it can be stressed or if She's had a um, induction of any kind. Okay, can be hard on the uterus, even if it was just castor oil. That can be hard. So if it was boggy, then I would this goes explain through. what I'm doing. But I would just massage it until it hardened up. And if it didn't harden up, then can we go into a um, scenario yeah. with uh, bleeding? Okay. So um, I'm just going to grab, let's grab a pad for her because we're definitely going to need a pad. So at this point, instead of bleeding's good, bleeding's not good. Here we go. So maybe describe what good bleeding is. Like, so are we doing placenta in or placenta out? Placenta's out. Placenta is out. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> placenta's out, so you don't want to get... You know, right now there shouldn't be any gushing and the placenta should be hard and at the, the area of the umbilical, uterus. Yeah, the, uh, sorry, the um, uterus so rather. I'm noticing that the uterus is a bit soft. So I'm gently massaging. I'm not being rough and I'm not coming down on it hard. I'm not pushing down a lot. If I do feel that I need to push down, I'm going to support her uterus with my other hand and kind of push it to my hand. I don't want to create more issues. So she's cupping it. Yeah. So I would cup it and kind of massage it. And um, I should notice that it does get hard and bleeding does slow down. If it does not, I continue that rubbing. And if I need to, I will hold it. I will hold it firmly in my hands. Just like a turn tourniquet or a tourniquet. Mm -hmm. I will hold it down mm -hmm. in my hand. Now, some of the other things that I'm going to be doing while I'm doing that is I'm going to be telling mom how wonderful she is, how beautiful her baby is. I'm going to be encouraging the, the attempts at nursing. If I need to, I will take a pinch of the placenta, even just a small amount, and I will maybe put some honey on it and I will stick it in her cheek. And I can see here, just hold that, oxytocin. hold that in your cheek. Um, I can also tell her to stop bleeding. You know, we're done. You're safe. It's okay. We're going to stop bleeding now. So those are all steps that I could take in a low resource setting where I just have what I've got right here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you might have, you might start massaging in there and uh, it might feel like there's actually something else still in there. And so sometimes clots can build up in there and um, it's okay. You just mm -hmm. keep massaging. It's kind of like they'll come out, they'll pop out like little jelly belly, you know, like little jelly bellies. <laughs> I mean, yeah, poop, 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 you know, and it, it's like, it's good. Cause if they pop out, don't get freaked out. Um, so one of the big ones that I forgot to mention is if her bladder's full, a lot of times the, the uterus can't clamp down if she has a full bladder. When was the last time 
she peed. Normally in labor, you want to be encouraging mom to pee a lot. At Just least every two hours people. or more. And so that would be another thing that I'm going to want to do right now. With and the a bleeding. full bladder can absolutely cause a hemorrhage. Think about it. You've got a balloon full of water in there pushing against this uterus that is trying to clamp down. You absolutely want to keep the bladder empty. Yeah. And she can pee on a pad, you know, mm -hmm. right on the bed. She can pee right there if she can't get up because it, it could be very awkward to try to get a mother who is hemorrhaging to the bathroom. So if you have a pan or a bowl or just the pad underneath her, I encourage her to pee. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Could you explain to me a little bit more about what it means to have a uterus clamped down? Like, I don't really understand that. Sure. Okay, so, well, you're basically, your uterus is like an inverted pear. So think of a big giant pear. And as it's um, pushing the baby down, the muscles are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger on the top of the pear. Really what's happening is the pear is contracting together and the top muscle is getting thicker and thicker and it's pushing the baby down literally that way the mother pushes but honestly the body pushes the baby out it really does i mean the mother sometimes has to help with that the reality is that you can't stop a baby from coming out when the hormones are working properly and that's what we really want we don't want mothers straining and bursting eyeball vessels and all that stuff uh-uh that's not healthy for the baby. That's blocking the oxygen supply off from the baby. So yes, we want to encourage the mother to do open glottis pushing, which means, ah, uh, 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 where you're, you're pushing and you really are pushing in your lower body, but you're keeping your throat open and you're keeping your vagina and your vulva open because they're both connected. The throat and the vulva are connected. If you can get her to relax her throat, her vulva will relax. So what does a, a uterus feel like when, when it's clamped down in there? What are you going to feel, Charlene? Oh, sorry, thanks for getting me back on track. <laughs> okay, <laughs> could be a long answer to that question. <laughs> um, okay, so a uterus, if you're going in, so what was the point of all that discussion that I said? What is this gonna feel like? So what is it going to feel like when it's clamping down? What it's down? going to feel like when it's clamping down is literally a hard grapefruit. And the mother can even massage it herself. Like, honestly, it's good to teach the mother because you might not be there every single second. She shouldn't be alone at all for the first 24 hours. She could faint. She shouldn't be standing up and going to the bathroom by herself for the first 24 hours. And she should be, um, you should be able to, if you go in there and it just feels either you can't feel anything it just feels like a bunch of jelly like bread dough kind of that's a problem you keep looking and looking and yeah, looking and looking and looking and you keep turning. massaging and massaging and massaging until you find that hard grapefruit and it will eventually respond to your touch and then when you leave it like you'll you'll, you'll have it holding it you're holding it's hard then you're slowly going to leave it and you're just going to wait just a couple of minutes and you're going to go down, maybe even only a minute. Go down, see, is it still hard? Yep. Great. Okay, we're going to go back two minutes later. Is it hard? Yep. Great. Five minutes. Is it hard? Yep. Great. And there's no bleeding. You keep in that, you're on that uterus, man. If you've had that happen, you're on it. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to, um, when you don't have that okay so say you go back and you just it was hard like a few minutes ago and then now you're going back and you're starting to see more trickling coming out this could this can happen right and you're also seeing oh my gosh i can't feel it anymore it's, it's it feels like really bought we call it boggy kind of like like bread dough right so we're gonna just we're gonna massage we're going to do whatever we can to make that happen. Prayer, intention, having the mother engage her, because like Nikki said, highly suggestible. Her body is so suggestible. Literally, you tell her to stop, she'll stop. I really know it. I've seen it happen multiple times. I've used it. 
So but in most cases, you're not going to be massaging the uterus. You're no. just going to feel, mm -hmm. oh yes, it's firm. We're good. And then as long as you're not seeing any bleeding or anything, every now and then you might just touch to see just to check firm, every not, 10 or 15 minutes. A massage is not something you're going to just routinely do. No. And you know, you'll see that in the hospital where they're in there, like just wanking it, you know, even if, even if somebody doesn't have any bleeding, it's like, uh, no, under two cups of blood is considered a normal birth. Anything over two cups of blood. And now the way you can tell is you can put red food coloring in water and put a little thickener like cornstarch in there and you can practice, you know, and you can practice throwing it onto pads and seeing what it is. And then like, maybe getting someone else to put it on there for you and then going in and seeing which pad has the half a cup, one cup, one and a half cups, two cups and three cups of blood. If it's a half a cup of blood, that's a placenta gush. Anything from a quarter to a half a cup of blood and you just see this red gush. Don't get alarmed at that. That's natural, that's a good sign. That means the placenta, which has been attached to the inside of the uterus has detached and that's a critical time for you to help the mother to get in a position where gravity is gonna support her and where she's tuning into her contractions and really focusing on her baby so that her contractions will stay, like I said, cocktails stay high. Any question? other questions? I have sure. a question. Um, so you had said earlier that uh, you should stay with the mom for at least 24 hours. I can't see hours. your face, Becky. Oh, where am I? I don't know. I can see your beautiful Thanks. breasts, so they're gorgeous. Well, they're lovely. I grew them myself. <laughs> Thank really you. Are. Just want to like, all the help from my babies. head on them, and you could hug me, and I'll pretend you're my mommy. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you were saying earlier that um, if you can't get the the uterus to clamp down and they're bleeding, they could use a piece of placenta in their mouth. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that we should stay with the person for up to twenty four hours to make sure they're not going to fat faint. How long in that period could you use that that trick? With the placenta if you if she started bleeding again and things were boggy the and, whole time <laughs> okay yeah. every time and you're not cutting the cord through all of this you're leaving that intact for oh, how long please. yes oh yeah. forever like really it's better for the baby if there's no it's an interruption i i would say a blanket interruption any cord cutting i don't think babies were meant to be detached from a placenta it's really high risk in a low resource setting risk yeah. of okay. high risk of infection for a baby, uh, it's not worth it, <laughs> honestly, because you could cut the cord even with a sterile piece of um, scissors, or scissors but then that's an opening right there. That's an opening. So then you're going to have, what if that cord gets dropped into some poo poo somewhere? I was going to say the S word, but I thought maybe. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Like, if, especially if she's in a, in a, um, like a yeah. camp or a you're in low resource don't cut it if you if you'd like you can look up lotus birth yes i know about lotus birthing but yeah, how long is it okay to right leave then. that attached weeks oh no it'll fall right off within yeah, three or five three days. days three days you won't have it attached anymore in so fact what, the longer you, the cord the quicker it falls off and what would you keep it in so that it's not making a mess or getting right we dirty just we just have ziploc bags we have um four uh four quart size ziploc bags in our kits Perfect. And then we wrap it in a cloth, uh, um, um, a blanket, right? Yeah, you could even wrap it in a diaper. And you can put herbs in there. You can rub the whole placenta front with like uh, rosemary, lavender, um, pine, all kinds of different herbs. And you just pack them on there, pack the herbs right on. They'll absorb the blood and your placenta will just dry up and it won't stink. Mm -hmm. Just and herbs, not essential oils, right? Essential oils would be fine. You could use either one. Um, you don't have to stay with the mom for 24 hours. Someone needs to stay with her. Okay. So it could be her mom or her, it could be her husband, husband mm -hmm. uh, another right. adult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or gallon. gallon size. Gallon size, not quart. Yeah. Gallon size bags. Okay. Um, let's move on. I would like to go through a couple other scenarios of the baby not breathing and, um, um, what else, else is something that we might. I would like to demonstrate rebozo. Okay. Okay. I don't know if have any of you ever heard of a rebozo or seen a rebozo. Okay, you have um, yeah, Pascaline sure because you're very you're a doula. Um, so yes, a rebozo is from the um, Guatemala area, 
Guatemalan midwives have, have um, used it for centuries, centuries, probably millennia. And it helps to adjust the position of the baby to a really good vertical um, and aligned position with the spine. It helps the spine to realign as well as the baby to navigate the birth canal with uh, the head um, basically adjusting to that position. So it could even help a shoulder dystocia. It, one of the main things that it really helps, I think, is either a posterior birth where the baby's back is to the mother's back, which can be very painful and difficult. It can still happen fine though. You can Commonly still- Commonly called sunny side up. I've delivered babies that way and it, it mm -hmm. may be more back pain, but it's possible, especially in a knee chest position is the best position for posterior that I found. But what am I saying about that? Um, my train of thought. The, the um, mm, mm, see, she just put her hand on my arm. She just put her hand on my back and now she's breathing. She's pacing me because I'm getting anxious, tiny bit anxious because I have a slight brain trauma and I can't remember what I'm saying. That's the honest truth. My brain just went blank. Um, now spirit, my solar plexus is starting to calm down. Um, you know, that's what calm is about. It's about like, you're creating it right now. She's creating an energy right now and it's going into me and I'm going, oh, huh, I just feel great. I don't know what I was talking about, but it's okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, oh, Pamela. Can't hear you, You, were, you okay. were talking about the rebozo. Oh, rebozo. Bueno. Okay, let's talk about the rebozo. Okay, you guys hold this. I'll go grab the rebozo. And then we're just going to have it there. And then at the end of the scenario, you're going to or during the scenario you're going to work it in but we're going to have the baby have some issues as well okay so you this are, is going to be posterior you we're also going to do a review cord wrapped babies yes thank you for the reminder beloved one okay. very 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 best friend of my whole life who's on this call pamela bigler we've known each other for over 40 years that girl is amazing to me okay here we are. So when we delivered the these. baby, um, you may not have noticed, but we somersaulted baby out. Yes, she actually did demo that. It was kind of cool. It just kind of <laughs> happened, right? But okay, this this baby's got its cord attached in an unusual way, but it's good anyway. I just made these. Nikki helped me, and they're awesome. I'm so happy. Um, okay, so we've got. Doesn't really matter how many times. Don't be afraid of a wrapped cord. Literally 25% to 40% of babies have a wrapped cord. So it's kind of not something to worry about. They do fine. Don't freak out. Um, when, the, when you see the baby come out, you'll start, you'll sort of see this around the neck, okay? You get a bit of a warning. It's good to be like, like Faye said, observe. That's your biggest tool is observation. And you observe, you don't absorb. You observe, you stay detached from outcomes and you stay detached from fear. If fear comes up, you alchemize fear. How do you alchemize fear? Well, your number one thing is your breath. The instant you start breathing, tapping into your breath and then grounding your feet down into mother earth. So your tools are, you're a tree. Your roots go down into the earth, your branches go up to the heavens and you grasp onto your deity your God, whoever that is for me, mother, father, and God, mother, father, God. And you, and then it, so you're grounded. So anything that happens, you're going to be strong. You just imagine the cord to heaven, the cord to mother earth. You're not alone. You've got angels surrounding you in a circle and you pace yourself. You bring your center back to your heart space. You get out of your head chakra, get down into your heart chakra where you can stay in your body and not be out of your out in your head and out of your body. So you want to be in your body. Here's what you do now. The baby is coming out and you are going to keep the head close to the mother's body, as close to the mother's body as you can while the baby's head, or while the baby's body is doing a somersault. It's called the somersault maneuver. Now, here we are. Now, easily from this position, we're able to unwind. And your, your instincts will kick in. I promise you that your instincts will kick in on this one and you'll be able to know which way to, which direction to unwind. We're gonna do a demo now for you, okay? And it's gonna have the wrapped 
support. And we're going to start out with a posterior baby that needs a bit of rebozo support. Okay. Okay, and Nikki's, um, you're going to have the baby in you, I think. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what position do you want me in? Okay, so we've got a posterior baby, a sunny side up. We want that baby to turn. A lot of times the babies aren't going to come out until they turn. The other way. Other way, sir. Yes. Yeah, so it's that, that way. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. So. So um, you're going to be having pain. Okay. And it's it's back pain, I think, actually. Oh, and one of the things that I can do, I'm going to put the rebozo on you. Okay. And this one, we're going to do candy oh. wrapper. And I'm just going to kind of shake it a bit, okay? Okay. Oh. Oh. Now labor takes a long time. So some of the other things that that we might try, is there another one you want me to demonstrate? Well, um, I was thinking that maybe you could do under her belly. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh dear, sir. Pendulous belly and needs to come up. So I'm just going to kind of support the belly. When the baby's when the baby's not straight and it's pushing forward at the top, it can really have a hard yeah. time descending. So getting the baby aligned with the spine can really help. Yeah. You can do this in a standing position too, and the mom can push the baby up if the baby's flipping forward, like with a pendulous abdomen. And mom can do it herself by having it like this. Yes. And mom pulling herself. Yeah, she can actually do it herself. She can walk around and pull it, and she, a lot of moms really like it. Mm -hmm. And you can even put a ball in the back. In, inside like a tennis ball and that can be and really then nice putting the pressure on themselves but you can also do this for them or dad can do it and that's now that's the running start position that's another position that's really really great and it also can help to put the foot up can you put the foot up on that it, it can also help to elevate one foot while you're going back and forth in a seesaw motion that can really help with positional issues any positional issues really can help with this uh, seesawing of the running start, especially if the elevated foot and you can alternate <laughs> feet. <laughs> I wanna do one other rebozo thing. Mm -hmm. Would you hold this um, I'll do it or do you wanna finish something? Shall we do the- Scenario first and then I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the- Okay. When baby moves into the correct position for birth, Mom will usually, things will start moving along. You'll tell uh, there's a difference. And then okay. the pushing phase will start, which can take a while. Okay. Well, what position do you want to be in? What feels best to you? Okay. Looking in with babies, everything good. Yeah, I think I felt them shift. Was that a push, mommy? Yeah, you feel like you need to push. Oh, great. Remember to breathe. Oh, that was a good push. I can feel the baby moving down. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> so skin to skin. <laughs> you wanna lay down? <sighs> oh, no, I feel like I need to. The <sighs> here until the placenta comes out. Is that correct? How's baby you do doing? Whatever you feel is bad. How's Everything's baby doing? Really well. <sighs> oh. <gasps> so, oh, okay. Yeah. See. Oh, okay, mom. I'm just gonna take the baby for a second. Okay. Yeah, I think. I think we just need to give the baby some stimulation. Okay. Oh. I think we still need some help for the baby. I'm gonna ask my yes. helper, Shara, okay. to, to help out with the baby. Okay. 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 All right, so is first is thing I'm okay? gonna do is actually okay? is get a towel. <gasps> mm -hmm. and okay. Towel's a little bit wet. That's okay. So this stimulating nice baby. Towel. Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, hello, sweetheart. You can talk to your baby. Oh, Hi, honey. Hi. You know, I'm just going to give baby a breath, okay? I'll give baby five rescue breaths. Little. They're just, just what's in my cheek. Mm -hmm. The lungs are this big. So I'm just blowing in five rescue breaths. Do all five. All five, no matter what. So it's like one and two and breathe very slow. It's like blowing into a balloon. You want to blow soft at the beginning. You know, when you blow into a balloon, if you blow too hard, you're just going to, it's not going to work. So you're going to just blow real soft. And you, and you want to watch the lungs that they're rising. You want to watch the chest and the chest will rise if you're getting good in good breaths. Now, if you're not, we maybe we have, um, we could have some mucus in there. Maybe the baby is a little bit mucusy right now, okay? But we don't use the bulb syringes anymore. They cause a vagal response in the baby's throat. We use postural drainage. And postural drainage is the most effective way. So mama, I'm just gonna take your baby for a minute, okay? And I'm gonna turn the baby over like this to help the baby's lungs clear, okay? okay? I'll do it as close to the mom as I can, always making sure I ask permission and let the mother know what I'm doing so she feels safe and I don't take the baby away from her. If the baby still isn't breathing or having some hard time breathing, I could do some massaging from the base of the spine to the neck, three or four of those from the base of the spine to the neck. And that can really help not only release the fluid in that position, but also stimulate the baby and stimulate the breaths and the respiratory efforts of the baby. Most likely this baby is gonna be breathing. Almost 100% yeah. of babies, probably 99% of babies after those five rescue breaths will be fine. And only maybe, you know, 10% um, will ever need any help. So you've got, you know, most babies, 90% of them are going to come out okay in most situations, okay? How much pressure do you use when you're massaging the back? Like, how it much is, would you say? Uh, I would say you can be fairly firm with it. I, can, I would say you can be fairly firm because, like, for example, when you're doing chest compressions with the baby, which are rare. So just an example of to understand babies more than you understand people. If you've taken CPR, forget what you've learned about babies, okay? Because babies, with people, it's the heart that gets the, the breaths going and the heart rate is really critical. Well, the heart rate's critical, but what's more important is the respiratory and the lung inhalation and the, vol and the lung expansion. So the alveoli have to, are filled with fluid and they have to have, the air has to come in quite quick, you know, quite intensely at the beginning to push the fluid out in the bottom lung fields. So that's why you don't stop. If the baby starts like, you know, kind of taking a few little efforts and, and stuff, 
do the full five because it could be that those lower lung fields are still having some fluid and you want to push that fluid out give the baby the best possible chance for a good don't be afraid to do respirations don't be afraid to and if the baby's not breathing within one minute it needs respirations as far as i'm concerned um, and that's the number one thing that will help a baby is respirations but if in the event now you can feel the cord like the cords attached right here, you can put your hand down and just feel the cord right here and it will be pulsing. You can tell the heartbeat for the first like, you know, 20 minutes or so you can feel it here. So you can tell if the baby's heartbeat is beating, but even if the heartbeat isn't beating, the breaths are what you need. And you do a full round of at least a minute of breaths before you even would start chest compressions on a baby. You wouldn't start chest compressions. And if you had to do them, this is what you would do. You would go down right, right under the nipple in between the two nipples and you go down one third. So, I mean, that's how deep you go, one third. So one and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe breathe one and two and three and breathe and what came out in the latest neonatal resuscitation uh, literature is that with babies it builds momentum as you're doing the chest compression so you can't stop until you're at 60 seconds to check the heart rate it has to be a full and as, when we went and did this recently it actually takes a bit of energy to do a full minute of chest compressions on a baby. I, I think it's a good thing to practice, you know, if you ever want to do that. <laughs> practice a few times so you get used to that. Set a timer and do it. Sorry, okay. again, how many breaths, finger breaths between the nipples? Two, two finger. Well, it's one third and it's two, two fingers. One, two and three and three. One and two and three. You want to have a hard surface on the back. I think um, actually resuscitating the baby right on the mother's chest is ideal. Personally, you've got a heat. And remember with kangaroo care that it's scientific that, and we wanna have a blanket on the outside. So we wanna make sure baby's dry. Oopsie, <laughs> baby's dry. Sorry. Can you chip it down? Mm -hmm. Baby's dry, mommy's dry, and we've got a blanket on top. So there's no way that that baby's gonna get cold. We've got the drafts, the doors, everything is shut. We're not letting any heat get out of this baby. We're making sure the head's dry. We're not putting a hat on the baby unless we're outside in a winter storm uh, because there's hormones that are coming off this baby's head. Can you tip just down mm -hmm. there? Oh, sorry, you wanna see me, don't you? Okay, that, sorry. Um, so, you, you know, you, you wanna let those hormones go to mommy because mommy is getting, that's part of that hormonal cocktail all that smell from that baby is really, really gonna get her doing everything she needs. It's imprinting, it's bonding, it's connecting. You don't wanna block anything. And then, so you've got the mother skin to skin with the baby. The baby's gonna be doing all this stuff. And then what was what was else was I gonna talk about? I think I was gonna explain something else. Well, I do want to say okay. that when you have a mom who's in tune when you have a mom that's really in tune with her baby and with her labor, um, a lot of times if the baby does need any help, the mom will do it themselves and they won't do five and they won't do this and they won't do that. They will just do what moms do. She might just take that spit, have baby there, maybe give the baby some breaths. Moms instinctually can and will do what needs to be done but sometimes they're so detached from from their natural selves that they don't. They're used to being told what to do. So yeah, anything yeah. that we can do to create sovereign, um, sort of self-actualization for that woman where she's making decisions on her own and you can help her to learn how to do that at the beginning where you're trusting her and you're listening to her and you're letting her guide you and you're listening to the things that she's saying so she starts to feel like she has a say and that the things that she feels and believes matter in that birth and so, so she starts to learn to trust her body 
to recenter if she gets off, like it's okay to have a moment. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to have a moment or a couple moments where you're getting a little bit upset or she is or anything. And it's just about learning how to bring that energy back down, learning how to bring it back down to your heart space and then help her center back down. Okay, so what other complications do we wanna do? I felt like maybe, does anyone have any questions before we move on? No? Okay. Well, we were going to uh, demonstrate some more of the verboso. Um, yes. I just wanna show one thing. Can you, yeah. can you? Okay. Well, one of the big things that happens, okay? I don't know why it just does. I think it happens because of our society. Uh, we don't, you know, I think if you're walking, you're not sitting in reclining positions, you're not driving a lot, and you're not sitting on the couch, you're, um, you're, you're squatting, you're, you're forward leaning positions and stuff, then you're going to have less, um, you're going to have less malpositioning, which malpositioning is probably the number one thing that inhibits birth and labor from going normally, right? Mm -hmm. Other than, um, you know, the, the environment, which we've discussed a lot today, but um, so what you want to do is you want to, if she has a, well, you want to encourage people during labor, if you have any influence over them, to not do those laying back positions because they cause asyncliticism, which I'm going to explain. And they also cause um, posterior positioning. Okay. You want to have also, you want to have good muscle tone down there. So I think a 30 minute walk every day is really healthy for pregnant moms. So, but um, what am I showing here? Um, can't remember. Um, so posterior? Yes, maybe? asynclitic. Okay, <laughs> I'll get this. So your asynclitic is the baby's head is like, you know, well flexed, but what happens is it can go from either that side or that side. That's a really typical thing. It's called asyncliticism. And okay, a really great way to get this out with the robo. So I'm gonna show you right now, okay. You determine if you can which way the baby's tipped um, with its head, and you can also determine which position the baby's in. Let's start with posterior. So let's say the baby is a little bit tipped with the head, plus the baby's turned around the wrong way. So what are we going to do? You're going to get on your hands and knees. Do you mind getting up on your hands and knees, honey? I'll help you. So that okay. We'll get you over here. How's that on your knees? Do you need anything else under your knees? Make sure the mom has stuff under her knees and make sure you have stuff like take care of yourself. Self-care is really important for staying calm. Having your needs met. So that means making sure you eat, you drink, you, you, you know, rest when you can. If she's resting, rest. Take care of yourself if you're at a birthday. It can be very long and grueling and it can be exhausting. Don't get too excited at the beginning. You know, pace yourself. So say, for example, I know this baby, it, her back is right here. This baby's back's right here, okay, on this left side. This is the shortest distance to the front. If the baby was on the right side, this would be the shortest distance to the front. But in this case, it's on the left. So the left side's the shortest distance to the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same idea with the candy wrapper, okay? But now I'm gonna jerk it to that side every so often. Jiggle, jiggle, jerk. Jiggle, 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 jerk. Jiggle, 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 jerk. You can get the dad to do this, or a friend or a doula. And I have seen babies turn within about half an hour of this after hours of not turning. So yeah, it works. Um, that's one thing I wanted to show. How are we doing mm -hmm. now? We've got any more questions or should we just move on? Um, I thought we'd do a breach. Breach is always fun. Yeah, let's do that just for fun. Um, okay. Maybe we'll have um, Nikki read it. Okay. All right. Hands off. Stay calm. Uh, mother in upright position, leaning forward like on hands and knees. Allow the body of the baby to hang and deliver. Baby's back must be towards mother's belly. If not, the legs are out. Hold baby by hip bones. Gently lift upward, then rotate. Have mother avoid actively pushing until baby is fully born to the umbilicus. 
Encourage focused breathing. Keep room warm. Prepare dry towels to greet the baby. Be sure to allow time for head to flex as the body hangs and helps with this process. We're going to demonstrate. Be ready to give in inflation breaths. And those are the five inflation breaths that I mentioned. Now, with the breech birth, there's been a 40-year birth, a 40-year breech study. We've been told that breech was a high-risk birth and that, you know, everybody has to have a cesarean. What happened was the obstetricians that knew how to do the births stopped doing them so they lost the skill in our country and then in France and other countries they have retained that skill and started um, publishing their findings and also did a full-on study um, which found there was no difference in the outcomes in any breach deliveries like compared to regular deliveries it's a myth um, babies are it's just a variation of normal, just like the cord around the neck. So to let go of all the fear around breach or cords. And the reality is that sometimes these babies aren't stimulated quite to the extent that the vertex or head first babies are. So just keep in mind that they might need a little more time. Give them a full minute to react. That cord blood is being pulsed into that baby. They're being oxygenated just like they were inside the uterus. The doctors in France say they do nothing for the first minute, even if the baby's just laying there. And they have exactly the same outcomes as if they intervened in that first minute. So you just have faith, but you might have to give that baby a little more stimulation, drying and breaths because it is less stimulating in the birth canal, which is what they need to get those lungs expanding because the lungs have to be highly squeezed. And then when they come out, they expand. That's how it works. The squeeze is, is very important. Okay, I think we'll go through one. Would you like to be the mama in this I'll one? be mama. Okay. You deliver. Okay, and you're gonna hold the film. You're gonna, you're gonna film. Thank you. You're gonna. I'm gonna put a dry towel up. Yeah. Always change your Not near the baby or the mother after the birth. Okay, so what are we doing? We're doing. Um, I'm actually gonna do hands and so I'm gonna be up here, and I'm gonna use my hands a lot to show baby coming out. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so that you don't have to touch as much, and you can be more accurate. Let's see. I'm gonna be over. Show. Sorry. <laughs> gonna be. Okay, so just to give you a sense of things, uh, for how this works. You really want to be able to have the mother in a position where she, the baby can hang. So if she can lean over something and have, and we're gonna probably eventually ever need more, but um, to hang. And um, why do we want the baby to hang? Well, one of the reasons is when a baby hangs, we got another doll. Hang on, I've just, you keep that doll. I'm gonna get another doll. So. Okay, but just for example, two things. When the baby's coming out, the mother does not push at all. She just breathes and blows and doesn't push. That's one of the hallmark uh, principles of delivering a beach safely is that you let the baby just come out naturally until it gets to the umbilical cord. Once it gets to the cord and the cord's out, then she can push the baby out and she should. And then with contractions. And then what happens is when the baby hangs, oh, sorry, when the so baby. Baby's vocals out and, and so here's baby, here's mom. So here's baby. So what's happening is this head is going to be nicely tucked because the weight of the body is pulling the baby down and this head is tucking. And when the head's tucking, the circumference of the head is gonna be much lower than it would if it was straight up and down like this. So that's why the hanging is a bit vital and you don't wanna disrupt that. You don't need to disrupt that. You can just let the mom have the baby hang. Keeping the room warm is important. Having a dry 
towel, which I just got. Hopefully warmed in the dryer. Yeah, a dry towel. And you're gonna dry that baby off. You're not gonna dry the baby off. You're just gonna have that towel ready to catch the baby so that it's not all slippery when the baby comes out, okay? So, but let's go ahead and do a full demo now. Surprise baby. breach. A surprise breach. So we don't expect this baby to be breached. She didn't know she was having a breach and we're just here helping her in an unexpected circumstance. Um, one thing that we might see just to get, give you a little heads up if with a breach to give you a warning is you may see pure black meconium coming out of the introitus, out of the opening of the vagina, right before the delivery of the baby. And that can be an indication that the baby just pooped. Don't worry about it. <laughs> with, a, with a breech baby, they almost all poop. It's not a big deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Um... Okay, okay, Mom. How you doing? Oh, a lot of pressure down there. A lot of pressure, that's okay. You just lean and just relax. You're doing great. Great, you're doing really good. Baby's right there. I can see baby's oh. legs or baby's bum. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> can see baby's bum. Oh. I think you got a bit little bum there. That's okay. You know what? You just breathe. You just yes, it's going to be perfectly fine. This is just perfectly fine. It's coming out just nicely. Just take your time. You just let your body do it. Okay. Ooh, that's right. That's right, Faye. You got this. Okay. I can see the I can see the baby's umbilical cord there. So you can actually push now. Oh. Yep. Oh. Doing great. Oh. Yes. Excellent. You see the baby's arms. So now we're going to wait for the next contraction. See? We're not going to try to rush this, even though the head's inside. Just letting the baby hang there. And mama's nice and tall. She's putting one leg up. Yeah, there we go. And there Ooh. you go. Scream, oh. there's your baby. We're always going to put it between her legs because the cord's attached. Or if we have to do something right here, we'll do it. But the baby looks okay. We'll just pass the baby up to mama and give a mama a chance to bond with your baby. She's just going right in there with your baby. <laughs> you did it, you babe. Did it. Excellent. The baby's doing great. I have a question, Char. Okay. Um, what if one arm is up and one arm is down? Yeah. Okay, so if you... Um, what happens is sometimes you have where um, the body's coming out, right? And uh, the legs are kind of just really, really tight. Usually if you leave them, they'll just come out on their own. But sometimes it'll get to the point where you just kind of bend the knee a little bit. You just flex that knee a little bit and, and you swipe it over and it just comes out. And then you bend this knee and you swipe it and it comes down. But that usually you don't have first. to do that, okay? That's only if for some reason it doesn't seem like they're gonna come. Now with the arms, um, that's why you don't wanna rush a breech birth because the baby's arms will usually be like this and that's ideal. If the baby's afraid, startled, rushed, or um, not getting enough oxygen, the hands can go up like that and that can be much harder because look at how wide that is. So yes, that's a great question. I think um, another reason why to not rush, to not stress the mother, to have her push consistently with contractions from the time the baby's born to the umbilicus though, because the baby needs to be born promptly. I'm just saying that you don't wanna slow anything down at that point, you wanna keep it going. So let's say it's a breach, you've noticed the meconium and the first thing you see is a foot. Don't freak out. A lot of times baby is, like this with their knees up see. and their feet right down here this is not a footling a lot of people get confused it just is there's a foot coming out but it's not a footling breach that's a very different thing but this is common for baby just to have little feet down there and a scrotum if it's a boy and just don't be surprised if you see a scrotum that looks as big as a head yeah 
and it's red and that thing is just like like you think something's wrong but it's not it'll go down it'll it's just inflamed from that whenever they come out this way and their scrotums are really pressured they get really inflamed and edemous and red um it can be a little startling actually <laughs> but don't worry um but the other thing i wanted to say is if the hands are up okay and the baby's coming down and you can and, you know you can see that they're up and you kind of have a sense that they're not coming on their own. They're not here where they're supposed to be. Then I'm going to have, I'm going to have you hold it, hold it. So then you could go in. So then you could go in and you're going to go right up inside and you're going to gently flex the arm, sweep the arm over the front of the body and help that arm up. Go in on the other side, gently flex the arm sweep the arm over the front of the body and let that arm out and those will come down now there's one other maneuver i want to teach you that's kind of you see we don't really teach hands in the vagina that I mean, you've got to wash your hands you've got to make sure if you have gloves to wear them all that so we don't usually teach that but i like to teach that one maneuver to you and the other one i want to teach you that's kind of a little bit advanced is um if the baby shoulder distortion, say you tried everything and you couldn't get the baby out. Say you tried all that stuff we shared with you. Um, you've got a baby that's stuck here behind the pubic bone right there. Okay. Now this back part over here, this back part, I'm just going to take the baby out for a minute. This back part here where you see the base of the back of the spine, there's a lot more room up there in here than there is in the front. And if you can get that um, posterior shoulder out of there, you're going to have an anterior shoulder like that. So I'm just going to demonstrate that. She's, we won't use that. I'll put you in there. Okay. And then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in this way. I'm going to go in down. I'm going to flex that posterior arm up over the face. Bring that little hand out right there. I'm going to have a baby. We're going to have a baby. No problem works every time well it doesn't work every time but it works almost every time if you as a last resort if you can't get as the a other. last resort as Should a last resort again from the top view why don't we do an, a, a scenario another scenario okay um how about you the midwife mm -hmm. i'll hold this and let's go through and we're gonna do we're gonna do a cord around the neck mm -hmm. a sticky shoulder and a hemorrhage Okay. And the baby's not breathing. Okay, we're just gonna try to accommodate those are let's face it, this those are the most situation. Those are the most common. Really stressed. That's right. Okay, so we're yeah, we're combining these together here. <laughs> and, okay. So I also want to point out with the cord, baby's shoulders do normally and they go forward like that, and there is a space right there for the cord to come through. That's where cord is most likely resting every time. If you have the cord around the neck, you start messing with the cord, you will probably pull that out of its safe space right there. So just that's one of the reasons we deliver with the cord, if at all possible. Can I make one comment? Mm -hmm. Also, that to add on to that, when you're doing the delivery of the breach, once the baby comes out and you can see the cord, if it's slightly to the right or slightly to the left and you can just gently tuck it over if it'll let you to put it aligned in the middle, that'll give it the best chance of having the most um, perfusion and uh, less pinching. Okay. During the second part of the pushing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll remind you. <laughs> yeah, you just holler out. I will. I'll on. remind you. You're doing it, she says. You've got this, you're doing it. Now, some women like that, and some women won't want that much closeness, but it, lots of times they do. 
at certain stages, like at the end. Here's your water. She's giving her some water. So strong. <laughs> oh. You need to go ahead. Oh, yeah. Doesn't need to. Oh, back pressure. Does that feel good? Oh, yeah. Right there. See the head? You're doing oh. great. Breathe. Oh. 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 I think we're going to need to change position. Some turtling. Put a leg up. The one that feels the best. Just go ahead and put the one that feels the best. Oh. Good. Good. And push with your next contraction. Okay, I'm going to want you to stand up. Yeah. It's good if you have two people, one on each side, and then you say one, two, three up if you have to do that. Lean on me. With the next contraction, go ahead and push. Oh, oh, oh there's your baby here. Here we go. Oh, 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 Taking, feeling the cords pulsing, not seeing any breaths yet. I'm not saying that to mom. Oh, oh see the little boy, was you okay? Do you want to lay down now? Yeah. Here, let me get you a pillow. Oh. Just relax. Amazing. I'm just going to roll baby over. Is he okay? Yes, the cord is still pulsing. The baby is doing just fine. Just gonna give the baby some time, okay? Because the cord's still pulsing, I'm just going to to try to let the fluid drain. Okay. I'm gonna give the baby some breaths, okay? Is he okay? Yes, baby's no, fine. Okay. He's just fine. Okay. Baby just needs a little help. Okay, chest is rising. There we go. Oh, baby's. <laughs> Oh. Hmm. 
If you feel the need to push, go ahead and push a little, okay? Yeah. Let me see. It's just sitting in there, but it's not coming out. I don't really want to pull it. Could you just cough a little bit for me? <coughs> okay. <coughs> there we go. There we go. And come the eyes back up again. Oh, nice and warm. Okay, here's your water. Hopefully I've got an assistant or someone helping me. I want to demonstrate one thing. Do you mind? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, so um, we are still going to have a hemorrhage, but I just want to say something about the placenta delivery. You have to really tip it. You have to like look at this one. You can see. Like this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it's coming out. Yeah. When it's coming out. Um, sometimes there will be. Um, membranes like it's coming out but you'll see like a membrane that's kind of going inside still maybe it hasn't come out you don't want to pull on it because you don't want that to tear right so one of the ways that you can actually help that just to come out easy is you just take the placenta and you just kind of turn it gently like this and the membrane will just form like a little round tube and eventually it'll just slide right out of the vagina I just wanted to mention that if you had a hard time with it coming out fully, but usually it'll come out one piece like that. Okay, now we're gonna just, oftentimes if there's a shoulder dystocia and if there has been a difficult delivery, the baby could have more need for resuscitation and there could be more um, need for, um, you know, active management of postpartum hemorrhage because it has a higher risk with those kinds of complications in addition, just to FYI. Okay. Um, I have a question. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, if baby had mucus. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when baby has mucus, you just put him on his tummy, on your forearm, and then you massage his back. Is that what you did? Or that's you didn't finish your sentence that's, about, yeah, well, that's baby what has we mucus. Teach. That's what we teach, yes. That's what we teach in our classes. We're teaching low resource uh, management, right? So, but what I recommend is if you can get a delay, I mean, this is really the best, if, if you can't get the music mucus out with the pasho drainage or, you know, sometimes the mother or father will just put their mouth right over the baby's nose and mouth suck and spit. That's another way if you don't have any tools. But this is a very simple little tool you can buy. It's called the Dali. This end goes in the mom, I mean, in the midwife or the care provider or the responder. And then this one goes inside the baby's mouth and the two nares. The mouth first, then the two areas and you're sucking. Okay, that's that's a delay. So how different is that from the pair suction thing? Um, the uh, the oh, sorry the action those little um, suction devices cause a vagal response in the baby, so it causes them to have respiratory distress. So we don't use them anymore. They're totally obsolete in all the practices that I know of anymore, except for maybe some archaic hospitals because they've been proven to cause a vagal response and they're not as effective. So if you wanna do suctioning, no point in causing a vagal response if you're not even gonna use an effective tool. You need to use either, I use electric suction or a delay. Those are the two things. Okay, I have an electric suction machine. It's very effective. It's loud. It can be a little bit loud, but I like it. But a delay is effective too. I think a delay is really simple and yeah. Taking a little bit of gauze and just swiping the mouth um, is also something that you can do. Yep. 
because sometimes just that little, maybe just a little bit of mucus around the nose and the mouth that needs to be kind of removed. It's slippery. It could prevent a good latch too if it's too slippery. Um, and a lot of times babies will be uh, working mucus out. Some babies have a lot of mucus to work out. Some babies don't, but it's not a reason to freak out. The number one thing that helps the babies to get the mucus worked out is the breastfeeding, the immediate golden two hours of breastfeeding. So the first two hours are golden. And of course, the first 24 hours are golden too. But those first two hours of bonding, imprinting and breastfeeding is absolutely the most critical part of the entire process as far as I'm concerned for enriching the bond and enriching the imprinting on the baby and the mom. So let's should we go through the scenario then um the hemorrhage yeah so she's had a long she's had a stressful delivery her baby's finally here the baby was stuck there was a lot of trauma going on placenta's out she's continuing to bleed i can feel that that her uterus is soft Maybe this is her ninth or 10th child. And so I'm feeling and I'm feeling. And okay, I can feel it starting to harden up. I'm gonna take both hands. I'm massaging that. Like I said before, I'm not going to push it down because I don't want to create a problem where we're getting a prolapse or something. So, so I'm supporting that massage. And if I really have to push down, I'm supporting it. And I'm finding that it's not firming up the way I'd like. And so I am going to hold it. And as I start to come off, uh, it's not staying firm. So I'm going to keep holding it. And, and I will give it a few tries. Like, oh, no, I'll keep holding it. And if I have to, I'll get someone to switch me out and I will just keep holding it. It's like you would a bleeding wound or something, you know, you just, I've held a uterus for 40 minutes. I was sore for three weeks after, but you know, if, if you have to, for some reason to hold it, if there's nothing else going on, she's not bleeding and you're keeping it strong. Sometimes it just needs a little help. And as long as when you take your hands away, there's no obvious bleeding and it stays firm, then you've done your job, you're okay. And then you just want to keep checking periodically. You could use it. Um, are there any um, uh, herbal remedies or um, <clears throat> uh, herbal teas that can be given to the mother at that time to help uh, with hemorrhaging? Yes, yes, you can uh, definitely. Um, if the placenta is still inside, you can use angelica root tincture. If the placenta is inside, excuse me, I need a drink. Mm. Celery. Mm. Um, if if she, if she's already had the placenta, I recommend um, a combination tincture usually is really good. You can get fresh or make fresh shepherd's purse. We have shepherd's purse right here. You can make a fresh shepherd's purse tincture. You could give her cinnamon. Um, you could give her like a nice combination of different um, black cohosh and blue cohosh that they put it all together for you. Um, and you can just give her like maybe two or three full dropperfuls under the tongue or in a little cup of water that she sips or not sips, but downs. And you give it to her every, like if you're using herbs, you give it to them every five to 10 minutes. You keep redosing it until it works. If you know, that's what I usually do. Um, you can use homeopathic remedies. Um, you have to be pretty skilled to know. Um, China is a really one that I've used. What you can do is you can, if you intuitively know, oh, this remedy is going to work. Like I feel really strongly this is buzzing my feet. So I know intuitively I'm getting a definite yes on this. But if you intuitively give her a remedy, like say it's China, um, that could that could just instantly fix the bleed. And then you don't have to do any, you don't have to worry about anything else. But that's after you've done the manual stuff and everything. Um, 
I think the manual stuff is more important than, you know, giving stuff by mouth. Um, but then, yes. And, and then the other thing is afterwards, I think giving chlorophyll and Floridex formula, if she's had a bleed, you give her those, those things um, routinely every day, Floridex and chlorophyll to replace the blood. So, yeah. What time are we at? How are we doing for time? Uh, no idea. Does anybody know what time it is? We've had a few people leave, so I wonder if we're post past our noon. Yes, twelve twenty. Yeah, twelve twenty. Mm -hmm. So we went twenty minutes over. Okay, so I think we're going to probably close out. Does anybody have any questions before we do that? <clears throat> I do have a question. Okay. Um, I don't know what it was called, but it happened with one or two of my babies, and when I was in labor. It was almost like the baby was hitting the uterine wall. Is that, and I just remember her physically going in and holding it, which was very uncomfortable, but she did something and held. And then, and it was only a few minutes, but then after that, it was fine. Do you know what I'm talking about? So is she talking about a, a lip on the cervix? Oh, maybe that's because because yeah. as I would push, Basically, it was like said, nothing happened. Right. You had a swollen cervical lip probably where you would okay. put it. So then she, I've done that many times. Okay. It's just okay. so easy. Like, okay. I'm not saying you would do it if no. you didn't have any experience or yeah. sanitation, but if, if you were really experienced, I'm just explaining okay. what I've done it. It not, too much but yes if you have to especially with first time moms sometimes with um even really experienced moms if that lip gets swollen and you mm -hmm. just basically reach up mm -hmm. and you massage the lip back during the okay. contraction and yeah, you just keep going back and you massage it back and it hurts yes like crazy yes it does but it works <laughs> if you need to get okay. the baby out it really does okay is there, um, I have read that you can use lobelia to help with that. Is that yes or no? The lobelia is a, for, is a, for sorry, go ahead. For the cervical lip. Yes, because it's a relaxer. So it's okay. a, yes, the, the lobelia will soften and relax. You don't okay. want to use too much lobelia. Right. If you don't yeah. have a problem, because you could cause right. the uterus to get too relaxed. Right. So, right. you know, it's always with herbs, it's, it's, if they're indicated, they can be great. Right. But you don't want to go into using herbs Correct. or any interventions unless they're actually indicated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Because they're powerful. Just Mother yeah. Earth gives us the herbs and we use yeah. them because she is there for us when we need her. But we don't need to use them if they're not indicated. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we should have a closing little thing here. Let's do a closing thing. Is that every, thank you so much, everybody. This has been so enriching. I'm so happy. Um, Aaron and Anne and Amber and Pascaline and Deb, thanks for um, joining us and um, staying with us even past the 12 o'clock mark. Um, we did get started a bit late, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll probably do another one of these, maybe get into more details. Um, but for now, let's just do a closing little um, um, ritual here. Um, um, I'd like to do a, a women, a well women song. What's the song? That What's that song that I used to do? Um, In my book to do this song so just a second here so and um i i am not uh, a trained birth worker to, for going in so the things that i would do for a cervical lip or something like that if i felt that that's what was going on is i would have mom uh, Sorry. Yes. with her head inverted so her head would be down and her hips would be up because I wouldn't be putting my hands inside the bum. So like if she was on her knees, her head would be down yeah. and below Head down her hips. on a pillow and yeah. Okay. To take the pressure off of that. Okay. Sorry, I thought I had it. Okay, I have to do something different. So I guess. <sighs> I wanted to do one that, that one about women. I, I know I know I um Thank you.
ancient ones. The women and the wisdom. The women and the wisdom. We are sisters on a journey shining in the sun. Shining through the darkest night. The women and the wisdom. The women. Um, Amber, would you like to say our closing prayer in our circle? Sure. Yeah. Okay, we're going to hold hands and we're going to pretend we're holding hands with all of you too. All right. Our dear Father, we pray unto thee and ask, thank thee for this wonderful um, class that we've been able to attend with. Charlene and others, we're grateful for the wisdom and information we've been able to learn and gather and, and we ask thee that thou might bless us to always be able to retain that information, that it might d dwell within us until it, it's time for us to use it and that we might recall it easily. We pray that we might be guided by the angels in situations of of birthing please guide us and bless those here that <clears throat> will be in situations regularly we bless the mothers also that are all bringing children into this world we ask for them to feel of thy love and that they might recognize their important role and great sacrifice to do so we bless for these babies that they might come to strong bodies <clears throat> And we thank thee, thank thee for the love that's been here. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I feel fantastic. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for coming and bless you all. Bless your day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Well, that was really nice, wasn't it? Mm -hmm.